Almost like deja vu. <laughs> it is a little. <laughs> hey, y'all. Welcome to Water Break. I got my kombucha today. This show is sponsored, but not really, by Ginger Aid. <laughs> Synergy. Kombucha is just a little weird for me, but it's all I had downstairs. I don't want to drink. Yeah, I was going to say, where'd you get that? I, I, Anna. Anna buys it Anna for the office. Kombucha. <laughs> yeah. So, welcome to Water Break with Waterboy and Annie, my wife, Water Girl. Uh, thank you for joining us. We um, uh, This is going on our sixth show. And and this show, my wife wants to hit supplements. Ooh, we're gonna talk about supplements. Yeah. Wait, wait, you you wrote down the title. Why I don't want to talk about supplements? Yeah, because I kind of don't. But, but then we're gonna do it. But we're gonna do it. Seems a little hypocritical. I'm, I'll explain myself. Okay. I, I, okay. A lot, we've gotten a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. I would say of all the questions and like emails I've gotten so far, people are like, please talk to us about supplements. So okay. got to do it. Yeah. But I'll tell you why I don't like talking about it. Also, I, you know, I'm interested. Yeah. And. I never really took supplements till about four months ago. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a different story. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, as we kind of uh, head into this supplement conversation, I, some of the things I was thinking about was, um, first of all, the supplement industry. I, I looked this up before before the show. Oh, good. Yeah, because we were talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a fifty billion dollar industry between kind of vitamin supplements and dietary supplements. Mm-hmm. So kind of it's a, it's it's a big huge. it's a category. Yeah. But fifty billion dollars, and so I was thinking, you know, there's a lot of incentive for the supplement industry to get you to buy their products. I mean, it's like they're they're yeah. making they're making cash cows off this stuff, right? Big, yeah, big time. Um, and if you and actually I googled it. And there's studies for why you shouldn't take supplements and why you should take supplements. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I just did a very surface level Google and it was like, well, who do you believe? Yeah. Well, you know, me and Annie have talked about this a number of times already on our show, but we're, we're both Christians. And so we don't want our feelings to run our decision making process in supplements. We don't want, you know, don't want our feelings. We don't, um, even this might offend some people, but even science isn't our standard. I mean, you know, look at COVID science and what happened there. Um, so even even scientific studies are not our standard. Um, now, they could be good advice. They could be good research. They could be helpful. But it's not our, our ultimate standard. And, and then lastly, I was thinking in this whole supplement world, well, um, there's such a, uh, what would you call it, a, um, uh, a herd mentality. In right. this fitness supplement world, and you know, beyond it goes beyond supplements, but herd mentality, included, everyone's though. doing it, and so I, I need to do it. The Bible is very clear that it, it's the ultimate standard in how we make decisions, and I think an, a, a helpful principle here is you always want to have two or three witnesses. You always the Bible, uh, you know, First Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians, chapter thirteen, Deuteronomy. Um, there's you know. It, it, some of that's referring to principles of justice and you know when people go to trial that you need two or three witnesses to condemn them or free them or whatever yeah. um and but in the same i think you want to take that principle i think it really makes things simplifies things and makes things helpful and a little more objective which is what we've pushed for a lot on the shows like try to make things objective as possible right right well two or three witnesses is part of this process and, and a witness could be a scientific study mm-hmm. um you know it's not just has to be a a human, but it could be another piece of evidence in the process. And I think that should apply for anything you do in health is try to have two or three witnesses that you trust in helping you with your decision making process. And so, and hopefully, you know, hopefully you guys can learn to trust us and in, in some of the advice that, that we give you guys and all this, and especially when you get into the supplement industry, there's, um, how do you know vitamin C is helping you, you know, right. how do you know, um, uh, you know, this, this newest and latest, greatest combined supplement is good for you or whatever. Right. And everything yeah, it's always something new. So they're always talking about something. Yeah. I mean, imagine, uh, man, I should, I should have thought more about this, but like, um, I mean, what supplements started becoming big in like the eighties maybe, or, or like the, the pill, the vitamin C pill. I remember mom giving us vitamin C back then. Yeah, I mean, some have been around longer than others. Okay. I don't know. Like, I, I couldn't tell you when, like, vitamin C hit the... But you're right. That's been around longer yeah. than, like, sure. I don't know, Burberry. Well, penicillin has. came in. You know, yeah, but that's I mean, not a supplement. That's not but a supplement. That's, yeah. that's a drug. So some yeah. have been popular for longer than that. And, yeah. and for some, for good reason. You know what I mean? I mean, people mm-hmm. figured out a long time ago vitamin C was what, so, uh, you know, oh, sailors sure. needed so that they didn't get scurvy. And so yeah. that's why they started taking citrus on their... I mean, that was 
hundreds of years ago. It's crazy. They took lemons and limes on their boats so that they wow. their gums wouldn't bleed. So like, I mean, some of this stuff is like old truth for a reason. That's interesting. But I didn't know then that. you still have to wade through all the other stuff. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? And right. there's, you know, there's a lot going on. $50 billion worth yeah, of stuff. Right. You know? I mean, the, and yeah, right. And that, that should cause some serious skepticism in us just mm-hmm. in terms of as being the consumer, like, okay, this is a, this is a big time money making business, just like anything else. Yeah. And just because it's natural or not a, a pharmaceutical, does that mean that the company is, you know, mm-hmm. being honest in what's in their product? Yeah, right. Or, you know, and then also, does that mean that it's actually going to help you? Right. Yeah, you know, I mean, those are questions that you really need to ask. And, and that's, uh, you know, I, I was uh, joking earlier um, that I literally started taking supplements about four months ago. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. but the, but the reason was is because this goes back to like you know trying to make things as objective as possible in your health life is I went and got a blood test and it's like oh you yeah. know you live in North Idaho you need a little more vitamin D in fact right. a lot more vitamin D yeah and so you, you you put me on some vitamin D and then we test it three months later we did another blood test and you can see okay you got more vitamin D in your system and this is yep. this is better what we better actually for you. we noted uh, three months later was that it was higher but still not high enough so I yeah. actually upped your dose my dose yeah right. yeah right. which I wouldn't probably have done. Unless mm-hmm. I check, because some people absorb yeah. really well. You better not be giving me like estrogen or something like that. I am giving. Like, he has no like idea secretly, what like, I'm giving him. <laughs> slowly Just killing me slowly, off or something. Yeah, you like, increased the health insurance I recently, didn't you? Or my life insurance. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah. No right. connection. So why don't you want to talk about supplements? But uh, you are going to talk about supplements. Yes. Yes. Okay. I don't want to talk about supplements because um, there is a huge tendency in everyone, mm-hmm. in Americans at least, probably everyone, to want to out-supplement a really crappy lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I understand that. I understand that. Like, why wouldn't you want that? Like, uh, yeah. you know, like there's an old saying in the personal training world um, that's, you know, the people that will just say, I will do anything to get healthy except change how I exercise and how I eat. Like, anything. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. just like not that. Like, so... I just, there is a tendency for everybody to just, whether they're like really cognizant of it or not, mm-hmm. want to just take a pill to fix their problems. Right. And A, that's not a good approach health wise. And B, it almost never works. Mm-hmm. Right? right. So like if you to, are. No, it almost never works, meaning it almost never works to kind of out supplement your right. unhealthy lifestyle for, in the first for place. For like your doctor to be like. You are pre-diabetic. It's really bad. Mm-hmm. And you're eating all kinds of processed carbs and inflammatory foods every single mm-hmm. day. You're eating out all the time, all the kinds of things that cause people to be pre-diabetic. And then for you to just take metformin or berberine or something to help manage your blood sugar, it's rare for that alone to actually fix your problem. Um, you really need to change how you eat, yeah. right? Like mm-hmm. same with like blood pressure even. Like, I mean, they're actually, uh, we're talking about on the supplement side, not the pharmaceutical side. Uh, like you could take as much mag as you want. And, and, and I would encourage you to, we're going to talk about that one actually, but like if you are not managing your insulin resistance and you are not fixing how you sleep, it's not going to fix you. Like it's just going to be a drop in the bucket. Supplements are supplemental. And in my opinion should be used very sparingly And your goal as a, your goal should be on to be on or to need as few as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and so many of us are taking, hundreds of dollars Mm -hmm. of supplements uh every you know week every month like we're just uh, you know pill after pill after pill um you know spending all this money telling ourselves like this you know i'm a healthy person now when Mm -hmm. really we really just need to be cleaning up the way we eat we need to be moving our bodies Mm -hmm. and so i just wanted to open with that because if you're one of those people who's like okay i eat like crap i am sedentary i don't do i need more vitamin d yeah yeah will (laughs) Will that fix it (laughs) what pill will fix that and the answer is nothing so i just want to be really clear about that you cannot out supplement a Mm -hmm. crappy lifestyle and you want to not that's just not the right approach at all Mm -hmm. um and I guess right under that, and we just sort of touched on this. If you are wondering about, should I be supplementing something? You know, how should I kind of sort through this? Yeah. Um, and you because already, you go to like the GNC and they got supplements. Oh yeah, it's all so over the overwhelming, wall. and they'll yeah. make all kinds of promises, and mm-hmm. they run all these ads, and there's no. It's way like to essential know. oils a little bit. I mean, it's, I, I essential know. oils probably kind of falls under the category this, that we're talking right, about, right? right. right. Take yeah. this thieves Take this. and put it on your. 
you know, yeah. you can find, yeah. you can find, it'll make you happier. You can find people mm-hmm. that will claim that. And then you can find yeah. just as many people who are like, it's a total sham. And yeah. it's also, but also in, and maybe some of them are right. Maybe some of them are wrong, but there's also the question, is it what you need? Right. Because yeah. everybody's different right. and right. that matters too. So those are the two, um, there's two questions that I, I suggest to people. Well, actually three, <laughs> uh, considering what I just said that you should be kind of asking yourself as you sort through the supplement game. Uh, mm-hmm. number one, okay. have you already done everything that you can, or are you currently working on doing everything you can to dial in? your nutrition and your movement. So moving towards real food, protein centric meals, Mm -hmm. getting inflammatory foods, processed food, fast food out of your diet, um, moving, exercising in some capacity that's appropriate for you and and your, you know, um, phase of life. Are you dialing in your sleep or doing everything you can to dial in your sleep? It actually sometimes takes some smart supplementation to help with that, but Mm -hmm. are you at least caring and trying, right? Mm -hmm. Are you checking all those boxes? That's number one. Number two is, um, you know, uh, when you're looking at a supplement and you're looking at your life and your symptoms and ideally your blood work, do you need this supplement? Because mm-hmm. there's a lot out there that you may just not need. Like mm-hmm. just because something says like magic, whatever, or, the, you know, magic vitamin D. I mean, yeah. why, or like whatever, like if it's not broken, don't fix it. Mm-hmm. And you will save money. You will save extra burden on your liver, having to just filter through all of these supplements that you might be taking. Yeah. If you really try to limit your supplement intake to just like what you really, really feel like you need. And mm-hmm. and the goal is for that list to be very short. Mm-hmm. And then uh, th- this is the third one that is really a big deal. Is the supplement that you're taking actually working for you? And I'd say this is one of the biggest ones, especially yeah. for health people, the people yeah. who are like all keyed into health and taking so many supplements. I can't tell you how many people are taking a supplement and I'm like, well, is that working for, you know, like that collagen you're taking, have you noticed a difference in yeah. your joints, your hair, your skin? And they're like, not really. Yeah. Um, and it's also like the first time they've even thought of that. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Right. Like, cause there's really two kinds of ways to note for supplements for the most part, mm-hmm. um, depending on the supplement, if they're working for you, either you're going to be able to actually experience it. Like I am taking glycine at night. I actually slept better. Mm-hmm. That's great. Right. right. If your goal was right. sleep or right. I'm taking this collagen and that it's and a that, noticeable difference, right? right? Hair, skin, nails, something like yeah. that. What were you going to say? And, yeah. I was going to say, well, that, and that can be a witness in this. If totally, if your experience yeah. with it is changing now, also you got the placebo problem that can come into play. Yeah, and but that's, it's like yeah, that is a factor. One of the things that, um, you know, my my mom and dad were illegally homing, homeschooling us back in the eighties. So my yeah, mom right. was doing home births. Like my mom uh, was um, not anti-vaccine, but very skeptical. She's so skeptical. I kind of I kind of grew up in this skeptical medicine world, at least in terms of like the medical industry industrial complex kind of skepticism. Right. Um. And, and I, so I have, whenever I see supplements on our shelves that you, you buy or whatever, I'm like, okay, you know, um, uh, I, I immediately start questioning you. Why, yeah, yeah. why, why do we get this? What do you, you know, which is fine. And, and we want, normal. and it's, and it's good. And so yeah. you want to, you want to question these things. And so I think your feelings, you know, I said earlier, like you don't judge things off your feelings, you know, the Bible is your standard, your feelings. Um, I, I think it, with prudence, uh, and this can be a witness in some sense, you know, it's like, it yeah. did make me feel better. Well, maybe a better um, word than feeling. Cause there can be some negative connotations yeah. with that in, the, in, in this discussion. It's more like your symptoms. Like if you're having migraines and you take an electrolyte and your migraines go away, that's a pretty good sign. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, this is actually helping me. It might not necessarily help the next person, but right. you can at least as an N of one say, yeah. uh, I'm actually experiencing a change. And my point is if everybody who's listening actually took all their supplements like from like morning, lunchtime, dinner, and like lined them up and like looked at each one. And number one, in order to do this, you have to know what it's actually for, which mm-hmm. a lot of people don't. A lot of times a doctor's like, just take this, this, and this. And you're like, okay. And you're completely disconnected. You don't even ask or yeah. look it up. Like, what is it for? So you should be connected to your supplements mm-hmm. in a way where you know what it's actually for, number mm-hmm. one. And if you do that, I it's shocking how many people, you know, oh, this is supposed to make me sleep better. This is supposed to make my joints feel better. This is supposed to make my hair grow. And none of those things are happening. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And again, it could be for a lot of reasons. It could be very poor quality because like we said, there's yeah. uh, this is the supplement industry is huge. Of course, they're incentivized to just sell. Mm-hmm. And it's not that well regulated as far as I can tell. Mm-hmm. So you really got to be careful who you're buying for, for uh, from and what you're buying yeah. because- you don't know what's in that capsule. You don't yeah. know how potent potent it is. You right. don't know how long it's been sitting in. Some is it warehouse. quality vitamin C? Is it yeah? Is diluted, it absorbable? You know. Is it absorbable for you? I mean, there's yeah. so many questions. So like, so, there's just uh, a lot uh, there. Uh, so how would you like try to best sort through, you know, what supplements 
you should be taking or not. I mean, I think for, for me, what was helpful was the blood test. Yes. I was like, oh, I'm low on vitamin D. Yes. I'll take it. And right. Now, at the same time, I haven't like felt any more better. I mean, I'm, I feel I've always felt good. Yeah. Um, so it hasn't really made me feel better, but I objectively see that, okay, my vitamin D was low in this blood test and now it's a lot better on this blood test. Yeah, well, you, and you I, know. totally. Well, I didn't finish my thought there because I was talking okay. about there's two different ways to tell if your supplement is working. One of them is your symptoms, uh -huh. symptoms alleviated or not. Uh -huh. And then any any of them that are supposed to, um, you know, result in a, a visible, ex, you know, mm -hmm. something you can experience like sleeping better or mm -hmm. having less headaches or whatever. Yeah. If it's not working, get rid of it. It's not working for you. It could be the quality of the supplement. It could be that you don't need it. Uh -huh. It could be that it's not a high enough dose, but whatever's happening, it's not working. So make a change and okay. more, more often than not, throw it away more often than not. Uh -huh. The other way to tell that it's working is what you just asked. And that's where the blood work comes in because you're a perfect example. You had three different markers in your blood work that were alarming or, you know, not great. Um, you mm -hmm. had vitamin D being way too not low. Not testosterone though. Your yeah. testosterone. We're good guys. Good. <laughs> we're good. You had liver, yeah. liver uh -huh. uh, enzymes too high, flag uh -huh. pretty dang high. So we had some yeah. serious inflammation in the liver. And then blood sugar mm -hmm. and at least vitamin D and liver, you're not going to be able to feel that. Like, I mean, you might, um, yeah, unless you start bleeding or something. Or yeah, I mean, like you might feel <laughs> symptoms that indirectly are fall sure, are fall out sure. from that, but you're not yeah. going to walk around and be like my liver. Uh, uh -huh. you know, w when you start taking supplements, you're not going to feel that difference. But yeah. then when we retested in three months, we looked at your markers yeah. and if we see an improvement, vitamin D coming up, mm -hmm. uh, you know, liver, liver enzymes, liver enzymes going down. Going what'd down, you which, give me? What'd you give me for liver en enzymes? It's a, it's a liver. There's tons of liver supplements out there. I've been experimenting with a little bit, but this is one called the liver love and formula from Anne Louise Gettleman. I can't okay. remember her actual company, but she is dialed in with liver and gallbladder stuff. And uh -huh. I've been really happy with her supplements. Yeah. I use that one for you or anyone who's got elevated liver function. Honestly, any Presbyterian who likes to drink the way Presbyterians <laughs> like to drink, it would probably benefit you to prop up, encourage, help your liver just a little bit. Yeah. And I also have you on her bile builder uh, for okay. your gallbladder. But anyways, your yeah. liver in three months made huge strides. And right. that's the kind of thing that you're not necessarily going to feel, yeah. but you'll see in your blood work. And yeah. those are really the symptoms, what you yeah. physically experience yeah. and, and be honest with yourself about it, you know, yeah. or so let's see it in some blood work. Other than that, why mm -hmm. are you taking it? Like just, yeah. and I feel like that right there is going to save so many people money. That's good. So yeah. many of us just, 100%. they just pee it, mm -hmm. it out. It's like what a lot right. of doctors just call it super expensive pee. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it has no uh, health benefit, benefit to their body. And so it just gets processed through your liver you're and then you pee it out. It. You don't need it. It's yeah. not working. It's yeah. low quality. Whatever it is, yeah. you're just peeing it out. Yeah. You know, and I think that people, this is one small thing, and then we can get into the ones we actually recommend because we sound okay. like, uh, I sound like a real downer on supplements. But I think one, um, we've talked about some of the other reasons that people like to take supplements. Maybe they're, you're really unhealthy and you're like, I'm just trying to compensate. And obviously mm -hmm. that's a bad idea. And we've mm -hmm. already talked about that. But I also think other people, um, it's almost like they just, it just makes them feel better. Mm -hmm. Kind of almost like uh, wearing cloth masks over COVID for yeah. a lot of people. Um, and again, it was insane. Yeah. We were all right. doing it's a comfort, that. It's a comfort blanket. Like and a, you can supplement in such a way where you're comfort yeah, blanket. Yeah, where you're yeah. like, I just feel like I'm yeah. doing something good for my body by taking yeah. all these pills. I don't even care what's in them. I don't yeah. know what's in them. I yeah. don't notice the difference, but it just makes me feel safer, yeah. healthier, something. Yeah. And that's just a really bad practice. Just yeah. like wearing a piece of cotton over yeah. your face uh, running or as, swimming as a talisman, <laughs> as a talisman for, for just safety really yeah. had nothing to do with whether or not they actually scientifically believe that that would right. mitigate influenza like yeah. virus, which it uh -huh. absolutely will not. You know what uh -huh. I mean? Yeah. Sometimes it's really not even about that, but if that's you, yeah. um, also consider save yourself some money. Save yourself yeah, some yeah. money. And again, right. like just, and join our club with the money you save. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> reallocate your funds. It, it's a good idea. Yeah. And I mean, just because you, are taking a supplement that you and your brain is like, this is healthy. Mm -hmm. um, and it says something on the bottle, like suit antioxidant, you know, all these, there's 10,000 buzzwords mm -hmm. that, that the companies know how to use. That doesn't mean it's good for you. And you are everything you put in your body, your liver has to deal with. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, just take the burden off of your liver and stop taking so much. Yeah. That's my, that's my soapbox. That's about good. Okay. The, you know, the downsides, the things to watch out for, but. Okay. Let's, let's get into the positive, the good side of uh, supplements and uh, you know, how to think about that. Yeah. Okay. Well, so. Um, I am kind of, I've been doing this for a long time, working with people for a long time. I've been working out for a long time and living all those things, experimenting. You've been myself. alive for I've a long time. I've been alive. Yeah. I've been exercising for a long time and yeah. always trying different things. So at this point, I've you know, lived longer than you so you, far though. You're that's always going to beat me at that. That's, You've always beat me at that. Yeah, I'm but, uh, but I'm still alive too. You are. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> barely. Um, so all that to say, uh, 
I've had a, a long time to research this stuff, experiment yeah. on my clients, on myself. And, but so I'll tell you what my opinion is now, but I am more than open to my opinion changing mm -hmm. and it has in the past and it might again in the future, but I will at least tell you guys what I think right now yeah. based on the studies that I read, the experts I trust, my yeah. own experience, all that. Okay. Yeah. In my opinion, there really are roughly, of course, there's always exceptions, but on average, three supplements or supplement categories that I think I could safely almost blanketly recommend to everybody. Okay. And of course, even in that statement, there could yeah. be recommendations. Who people who don't need it. We're yeah. not doctors. So yeah. please, you know, the whole thing. But you know, people want to know, people ask. Mm -hmm. And I would say I have Sometimes barely, I self-identify as a doctor. I mean, just, I'm just... It's not, you know, you know self identified. Yep, yep. But uh, so, and I have barely ever, with these three supplements we're about to talk about, ever um, had someone take them and not feel better. Okay. Almost ever. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about those. And besides these three, I would okay. honestly say I'm very skeptical of most other supplements unless. You are taking them for a particular reason, either um, a, an obvious symptom matched with blood work that kind of yeah. matches that, like something very, very targeted. So like the liver and the liver supplement I gave you, the, you know, yep. the uh, berberine that I yep. had you on for blood mm -hmm. sugar. I would not just say everybody take that. I think you need to see blood work. You need to talk specific person, specific yep. symptoms in order to make that recommendation. Okay. So there's other supplements that I often use and I, and I recommend to people, but these are really the only three that I would say most of y'all probably could use this, mm -hmm. not knowing you at all, not having looked at your blood work. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, first one is electrolytes. And that's not really a very hard sell. They're Even for a guy like me who's just chilling, not working yeah. out very much? Actually, yeah. And um, why? We can, we'll get why to that. Why for a guy like me? Yeah, why for a guy like uh, you? So I want to know now. I, yeah. I'm going to tell you, like, just right yeah. now, I'm going to tell you. So um, electrolytes, as most of us no, are just minerals in your body that carry electric charge. They are really, really important for, and I think it is helpful for people to understand kind of a little bit more what they are because mm -hmm. you can then connect it to why they're so important and why sometimes yeah, you feel so nope. bad when you don't have them. But I mean, they regulate um, nerve and muscle function. They're heavily, um, especially sodium, involved in the hydration of the mm -hmm. body. They balance uh, blood acidity and pressure, and they can also sometimes help rebuilding damaged tissue. So they're quite important. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, in my opinion, again, just based off of my experience, what I've seen, what I've read, almost everyone is electrolyte deficient, okay. almost everyone. And that includes sedentary people. Um, but what, uh, what, what do I need to have repaired in my body? What, you know what? Well, I mean, again, um, I'm just saying it's not necessarily about the repairs. It's just the fact that electrolytes are involved in so many of the processes that okay. even a body that's not out sweating or doing triathlons uh -huh. needs to be able to do on a regular basis. And a lot of times, even if you're not someone who's like, I feel so ill, I have terrible migraine. Like, even if there's not something right. really wrong with you, uh -huh. um, if you start taking one a day in one form or another, you'll actually feel better. Your energy will improve. Mm -hmm. You'll just like, like your, your head will be clearer because again, all of this is your brain, your heart, it all runs through electrical processes. Right. And a, another argument why almost everybody should have one is that our, our food, um, and our soil, uh, and our salt is all very, very electrolyte depleted. Uh -huh. So we're just not getting it in our diet because always, 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 you know, there, there's people who are like, you shouldn't take a supplement because you should be able to get every single thing from your food. And on the one hand, I totally get that sentiment and mm -hmm. I wish it was true, but with, and, and if you're eating a hundred percent, um, like fast food, processed food, then you are really far from the mark. You could be getting a lot more nutrients from your food if you're yeah. eating real food. Sure. But even if you're eating real food, um, the three that I'm talking about today, electrolyte being the first one, it is very, very likely that you're not getting mm -hmm. enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and it's one of those things that if you, it, you can totally try it, um, there's, you can do capsule or you can do the kind that you dissolve, like in water. Yeah. Um, you can try it and see how you feel. If you feel better, mm -hmm. um, great. If you don't, then you can stop. You're not going to hurt yourself. And that's really, really nice. But I would say even someone like you would probably benefit from it because mm -hmm. most of us are electrolyte deficient, especially uh, potassium, is, chloride, magnesium. Is that a blood test that I could see? I could, you I could can, get a blood test and say, I'm, elect, I'm electrolyte deficient. You totally can okay. see it. Um, you can see these, your sodium, your chloride, mm -hmm. um, uh, for, uh, we'll talk about mag when we get to it. Okay. Um, you want to look at the red blood cell mag count. Um, right. you can see it on blood work, but the range is kind of, I still know a lot of people who might not be flagged, might be in range, but still feel better on an oh. electrolyte. But okay. le let's talk about, um, a, a few of the groups of people that would benefit the most. Okay. okay. From this, because okay. that, that kind of matters too. Obviously, oh. if you have an athlete, um, someone who works out regularly, someone who's dealing with heat, humidity, 
um, and they're just sweating a lot. You obviously sweat these things out. Yeah. Like you're sweating out a lot and it's yeah. not just salt. It's also your mag, your potassium, your, you know, all these other things. Right. So, so why not just drink like a Gatorade a day? Well, you know, you, that's one way to replace electrolytes. Uh -huh. However, you're dealing with the red dye and the sugar and all yeah. the other additives in a Gatorade. So that's uh -huh. the only reason I don't like those. Uh -huh. Um, and I, I prefer other forms. Um, uh, there, there's so many out there. I'm still not, um, decided on what ratios of sodium to potassium to mag, for example, I think is best. It's uh, optimal. It's okay. optimal. Yeah. So I, I'm still kind of, mm, I'm unsure. Element, um, LMNT is how they spell it, but they mm -hmm. call it element. Rob Wolf invented that one. Um, it's really, really big in like all the more alternative health uh, space right now. Okay. It's expensive, but it's, it's cool because it comes in all kinds of fun flavors and it's, it's like a powder and you put it into your drink. Okay. It's really big right now, but man, it's like a thousand milligrams of sodium. The salt content is high, is really high. So I only recommend, I know tons of people, athletes and not athletes who sip one of those a day and are thriving. They love it. And that's shocking because that is a ton of sodium. That's yeah. really high. Most other electrolytes you see a little bit more of an even the sodium is still higher, but it's not that high, yeah, uh -huh. but I definitely recommend something like element for people who are like sweating a mm -hmm. lot, like athletes yeah. they're in a hot, you know, maybe they're training yeah. in a hotter climates. Maybe they're doing double right. days, football, right. you know, that kind of thing. Maybe you do sauna a lot. Right. Definitely. That's a safe, that's a safe yeah. one for okay. me. I'm still on the fence about it, but again, uh, the, I, if you wanted to test it, you could go by symptoms, drink it and just see. Okay. Um, so that's something to think about. Also cold and high elevations. Um, that can whack out your electrolytes also. So it's good to make sure you're replacing them. Breastfeeding moms. And I'm just now starting to think about this. I just saw some really interesting research about that, how that can help with milk production, like quite a bit, at least okay. in some of the studies I look like. And it makes a lot of sense because of how much metabolic burden is put on your right. body right. when you're breastfeeding. So moms, if you're feeding a baby, consider a daily electrolyte and see what that does for you. See what that does for your yeah. energy in general. See what it does for your milk production. For I thought, feeding your babies. And yeah, everything. totally. Yeah. Uh -huh. Especially if you're a low pr producer, that can be yeah. really frustrating. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, and this one, okay. This one is, uh, it might apply to a lot of um, our listeners is if you're trying to eat less processed, which mm -hmm. I encourage you all to do. If, if you get down to eating kind of like the way we eat, which at least at home is like almost no processed food. It's mm -hmm. a lot of meat. It's a lot of veggies. Like we're, we've gotten processed food mostly out of our lives. That's where most Americans get their sodium is processed food. Yeah. That's where they get most of it. So if you're eating because it's chock full of salt and yeah. really preservatives cheap is what it sodium is. Cheap sodium chloride, iodized salt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, not like good quality mineral salt, but yeah, just yeah. that cheap yeah, processed yeah. salt. But that is still where most Americans are getting all their salt. So if you're trying to eat healthy, you're eating less processed, you are probably a really good candidate to need to actually replace some of that. And just because you're salting with your Himalayan salt or whatever, your food that you may not be getting enough. So that's uh -huh. interesting that some of the healthier people might be the ones who need the electrolyte right. replacement the most. And especially if you're eating low carb. Because right. when you eat low carb, you're eating ketogenically for a time, whatever, your body dumps minerals. So you really need it. And there's a lot of people, and I've experienced this, and I've experienced this with clients who believe that the mm -hmm. keto flu that a lot of times people get when they right. first go low carb is actually just major electrolyte deficiency. Wow. And oftentimes yeah. when you replace electrolytes, this would be another example where I would totally push for something really high in soda, mm -hmm. sodium, like element it completely goes away, which is yeah. insane. So it's just, um, so could this also really be kind powerful. of like an assessment of, well, maybe you don't need three cups of coffee a day. Maybe you just need an, uh, an extra electrolyte or, or, or it can, yes, yes. And I would, another one I would flex. So energy, um, muscle function. If you're, if you're a crampy, either when you're playing your sport or you wake up in the middle of the night, also headaches, mm -hmm. this is a big one, like mm -hmm. migraines, chronic headaches. A lot of the time, um, electrolytes can, um, anywhere from completely make it go away to yeah. at least bring down the severity. So uh -huh. it's, it's, it's something to think about and, and it's, it's kind of hard to go wrong. So yeah. that's why I put it on the list of almost everyone, especially yeah. the special cases right. that I just listed. And then, and then you'll even like, I mean, our kids aren't on electrolytes, yeah. but when, you know, um, they have practice or they have a full day of games or whatever, you'll give them an electrolyte. You know, Anytime so, they're in season, yeah. uh, working hard on mm -hmm. a daily basis, either with games or practice, yeah. I have them take one every morning. Um, uh -huh. uh, I just think it completely benefits them. Yeah. Uh, and I don't stress it as much when they're off season, right. even though it right. probably would behoove them to take one. Uh -huh. Um and if I ever see like lethargy, headaches, anything like that, yeah. uh, the electrolytes come back out yeah. for sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and it almost always correlates with feeling better, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, that's why it's on the okay. list. Yeah. There you go. Okay. okay. Um, vitamin D number two. 
If you're in North Idaho, for sure. I mean, yeah, if you're in North <laughs> Idaho, like that's what yeah. I mean by this one is almost 100% a hundred percent of shoe in. If you're in yeah. the Pacific Northwest, yeah, yeah. if you're in any kind of Northern heavens here, uh, yeah. hemisphere, if, yeah. unless you are at like, cloud you, levels consistent, unless you're a medical and, yeah. Marvel, yeah. you probably have low vitamin D. And I mean, I don't yeah. think, I don't even have to do too much explaining because COVID did it for us. There was so much that came out about <laughs> I vitamin remember D. talking about that on our show. Oh man, um, the research and the fact that everyone. And it felt so dumb to talk about it because like, yeah, just, you know, vitamin D is going to help you along. Well, it was just this, like a know? one-to-one yeah. correlation. Like every single person getting really sick or dying from COVID was metabolically unhealthy yep. and or vitamin D deficient. Yep. It was like, but yep. like none of the, you know, Fauci wouldn't talk about it <laughs> because I don't know. It's like mm-hmm. really cheap. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, so that's why it's on the list. It's yeah. why it's on. You wouldn't make any money mm-hmm. off of it. Um, vitamin D is super, super powerful in so many different processes in the body. It affects everything. Um, it acts like people say it's not a hormone, but it acts in some ways like a hormone. So it's very, very important. And I would say if you had to pick the biggest health impactors uh, or the biggest ways that it, it can impact our health, um, I would probably say immunity, which again, big, big takeaway from COVID uh, brain and mood disorders. Okay. And that's a really, really big one. Any kind of brain or mood disorder. Um, and then bone health. Because what do you mean disorder? I don't like that word. Gabe does not like the word disorder. No. I retract the word disorder. No. Um, if you are sad more than you should be. Okay. Take some vitamin D and I, that and your B vitamins. Um, I'm not saying that these vitamins are a panacea for every single sure, person sure. who is maybe dealing with some serious, you know, clinical whatever, but it's mm-hmm. really common okay. to have a mom in particular. It could be men yeah. too, or a teenager yeah. who's just like, I'm sad all the time and I don't know why yeah. and how frustrating, you know yeah. what I mean? And uh-huh. you don't want that for anybody. And it's like, and it's just crazy when it, you don't even have a reason for it sometimes. And you look at their vitamin D and you look at their B, especially B12 mm-hmm. and it's so low. Can um, you see on, cause I know on, you I've already seen it on my blood work. I could see I was low vitamin D levels. Mm-hmm. Could you see that with uh, B12 also? I think your B12 is fine. And that's probably uh-huh. because of how much red meat we eat. My question is, which is great. you could see the B12 in the blood tests. Yeah. yeah so you have to ask for it. You have to ask for it. It's yeah, not, yeah. most doctors mm-hmm. won't just pull that unless you're dealing yeah. with mood or energy. And even then yeah. sometimes they won't, they'll so, just, so Annie yeah. works with a lot of people. Um, she consults with a lot of people on their blood panels and yeah. so forth. And so sometimes you got to actually ask for the right blood panel. Right. right. There's, um, there's standard, like your CMP, yeah. maybe a lipid panel, but beyond, you know, they'll tack an A1C on there usually, but uh-huh. beyond that, like fast insulin, you have to ask for vitamin D you have to ask for, okay. unless you're, which is B12. You have to ask for, um, which I, I, <sighs> I understand uh, to some degree doctors are trying to save people money Yeah, yeah. Um, and they're trying to work within, you know, if they have a cooperative or whatever, yeah, they're yeah. trying to not order tests that they deem like not important yeah, or not necessary. Right. But there's some that I just think should be suggested yeah, and they're not. Right. So it's unfortunate. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, if you work with someone who knows what they're doing, a good functional doctor, they yeah. may push for things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So D, I mean, huge for so many things. I mean, any kind of neurodegenerative disease, it can lower blood pressure. It can affect uh, insulin, type two diabetes. Like it's. Very this is much, vitamin D still? We're still on vitamin we're D? We're still on vitamin D. I mean, it's like a Swiss army knife. It's like a Swiss army okay. knife. It's effect, it affects so many things. And I mean, there is no reason mm-hmm. for anyone's vitamin D to be low. You can test it. You can supplement. It is not that hard. And uh, so there's really hmm. three ways to get it. Sunlight, food sources. So like your fish, liver, egg yolks, mm-hmm. some mushrooms, mm-hmm. things like that. And then obviously supplement. But I don't know that I've ever... I don't know that I've ever worked with anyone who had optimal good levels of vitamin D who was not supplementing at least some of the time. And and of course that's purely anecdotal, maybe in sunnier areas, some people who are just getting so much sun on their body and they, they, they convert it. and yeah. they absorb well, because that's another issue. Some people just don't, don't absorb convert it. sun. Yeah. 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 And mm-hmm. some people really do. So yeah. especially genders, especially what gingers. Oh, gingers. <laughs> yeah. I don't, they're vitamin I don't D. know. Are I gingers don't know. vitamin D lower? <laughs> it, pro- it probably is. I don't know, but I'm just yeah. saying more often than not in order to get to where you want to be for vitamin D, which in my opinion, it, it, you want your levels up to like 60 or 80. Now, if yours are at like 30, your doctor will say you're fine. Uh-huh. And I do not agree with that at all. I think yeah. you want to be really, really high, mm-hmm. um, higher than that. Like 60 to 80 is, is where yeah. you want to be. So just keep that in mind. And I will say though, um, it, it, it is almost always, especially in the Pacific Northwest where it's just dark. A lot of the time we get very little sun here. Mm-hmm. Um, get, well, most, we get very little sun basically like November through February. 
Yeah, it's, but it's a very then it starts to get better over time. Season. But then during the summer, yeah, during the summer yeah, we it's get a very all this awesome season. Yeah, yeah, right, and right. a lot of people claim right. that what we call cold and flu season, which is winter usually, uh -huh. really should just be called low vitamin D season. And I think that's really yeah. interesting. interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. But it actually uh -huh. makes a lot of sense. But yeah. all that said, you do want to get tested at least sometimes. It's safe to probably take like an uh, like a, a kind of a maintenance dose. Uh, vitamin D is sold is measured in IU's international units. Okay, and you know. Uh, a, Anywhere from a thousand to five thousand I use a day is normally pretty dang safe, whether you've had blood work done or not, especially if you're not outside all the time. I mean, who's even also who's eating liver and mushrooms? And I mean, most people are not we're not eating enough, even close right. to that the vitamin D rich foods to just get our levels where they need to be. Overdoing vitamin D is possible, but it's really hard to do. It's really rare. Um, it's called hypercalcemia, but uh the odds of you doing that are really low. But I would still get tested at least once a year over COVID. I am a perfect example. I got really zealous about it. I was like, I'm not going to get COVID. I'm going to have so much vitamin D. I'm yeah. just going to, you know, and I was like pounding it. I was doing yeah. like the Joe Mercola okay. uh, thing where it was like 20,000 on Monday, 15,000, 10, and then five, five, five all through the week. And okay. I did that all through the winter. And then I got tested and my vitamin D was like 134, which is really high. I felt great. I had no symptoms of overdosing, but no doctor is going to look at that number yeah. and be like, that's fine. It, yeah. it wasn't fine. So I had to actually back it down. My guess is I'm just a really good absorber. Uh -huh. Like, and, and you just can't know that until you test. So yeah. just another reason to at least once a year, <laughs> keep an eye on that, um, on I, that number. I just think it's funny how you're bragging about your body. is just a really good absorber for vitamin D. It's just, I mean, you're bragging I, about it. I'm it's the best. <laughs> I've never seen, I'm, I am taught. I'm a toxic, I'm the best. toxic <laughs> level. The best. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my gosh. But so okay. At least, so the last one yeah. is, uh, magnesium. Yes, okay. So magnesium. hang on, hang on here real quick. So we, you, you said electrolyte yep. is, is an important one. Yep. Uh, and then you said vitamin D mm -hmm. is an important one. Um, especially for the Northwest people, yep, especially the in the cloudy wintertime, people in the wintertime, especially. Um, yep. and then now magnesium and yes. again, um, you can, um, could you do a blood panel where you can look at like vitamin A, B, C, D, yeah. all that stuff. So you could see all the vitamins in your body yeah, and look at all the magnesium and potassium and, and the isms. You can look at most things, uh -huh. a different, um, minerals and things are all best looked at different ways. Like some are like, Oh, you should do a hair mineral analysis for this one okay. for mag, which is the last one that we're talking about right okay. now. Um, yeah, there's different ways to test it. One of the best ways is to look at the RBC. So the actual red blood cell, like the amount of okay. magnesium that's actually making it into the red blood cell, okay. as opposed to what's just in the serum. But a lot of docs don't honestly know that much about this. Uh -huh. And with a lot of these things like magnesium, at least, and which is why it made it on this list. Cause I feel pretty safe, just kind of blanketly suggesting it to most of us. Uh -huh. um, you can mostly go off of symptoms and you can mostly safely assume that we okay. are all deficient because yeah. our food is deficient and because our soil is deficient. Why is our food deficient? Well, because it's grows in the soil and it's like, you know, so it's just like a, a trickle down from saying it's, we don't have it in the dirt like we used to. Uh -huh. And so, so you're saying our soil is magnesium it. deficient. Yes. Yes. And so it's not, do you know why our soil is? I know this I is probably I, I, getting a little outside of well, your, mm. your reach here. It is. I think oh. it's just the way that we farm, the way that we monitor, the way that we do all these things. Uh -huh. And I mean, again, we've talked about the double-edged sword of the way yeah. we're, um, because industrialization of food has yes. been a blessing, totally. but it's also, like, we um, have more of it, uh -huh. but you're not getting the mag from your green leafies, for example, uh -huh. now that you used to. And uh -huh. on top of that, most people aren't eating enough of that kind of food, yeah. like that magnesium rich food. So like uh -huh. your beans, your nuts, your seeds, like shellfish would be another one. But I, I just, you almost always could assume that you're a little deficient and and magnesium is so, so important in our bodies, like just for general muscle, bone, heart function. So yeah. any athlete out there, or if your kids are athletes, uh, uh, at least a low do maintenance dose of magnesium at night, or at least intermittently is a really good idea. It is, we've already talked about its effects on blood sugar. Mm -hmm. So some of this you can kind of uh, extrapolate out or like reverse engineer, like all of these symptoms are so common. Like yeah. everybody's blood pressure is so high. Everybody's blood sugar is messed up. And okay. what helps with all those things? Magnesium. <laughs> so it's okay. a pretty safe bet. So yeah, blood sugar regulation and it works on over 600 enzy enzymatic functions in the body. It's also huge for, um, 
uh, I, I mentioned hormones, but specifically mitigating like PMS type symptoms. Uh-huh. So a lot of girls who really, really struggle uh-huh. with a horrible time week four of their cycle before yeah. they start their period, right. um, just magnesium can okay. be magic. And again, mm-hmm. it's one of those things where you really, it is very hard to take too much. Uh-huh. It's, it's very safe. So the risk versus the yeah, potential right. benefits, like mm-hmm. it's a really good mm-hmm. equation. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So. Um, the big thing I want you guys to know about mag is that number one, for the most part, you want to uh, take it at night. It generally has a calming effect. It, okay. It's one of the things I have people take when they're having a hard time sleeping. Okay. So take it at night. It just works better there. Um, uh, from, for the most part, I would say, um, there's tons of different forms and I think, uh, different kinds of magnesium. I think that, um, can really confuse people, but I, I would say if you're just looking for mostly like, I want to sleep better, I want to feel that calm. I maybe want to help my blood pressure a little right. bit. Um, mag glycinate is, um, it, it's not the cheapest form, but it's not super cost prohibitive. Okay. It's like the Swiss army knife, good starting point magnesium. It also doesn't have, um, laxative effects, which, which some people are very sensitive yeah. to that. And uh-huh. like some magnesiums and I'll talk about it. The next one I'm going to talk about can really give you the disaster pants, like really bad okay. <laughs> if you are sensitive to that kind of thing. Yeah. If you're constipated, um, maybe the next one, mag citrate, is a good choice for you. Loosen some things yeah, up. Yeah, it can actually be really uh-huh. helpful, but you need to know that, okay? So uh-huh. glycinate does not tend to have laxative effects, uh-huh. um, okay. at least in most people, so it's a great choice. Yeah. Citrate, um, and it's very bioavailable, which means your body can absorb it very readily. Uh-huh. Um, citrate is also bioavailable, pretty affordable, um, not a bad choice at night if you are wanting the laxative effects. Okay. Okay. And then the, and there's more than this, but these are the three I tend to kind of go to at least at the start. Uh, L3 and eight as is been kind of getting talked about a little bit more because cognitive function is such a big deal right now. Yeah. Everybody's talking about it, but yeah. it's the one form of magnesium that crosses the blood brain barrier and it can really help with cognitive stuff. So yeah. any, really anything just like ketones, I would say migraines, brain fog, just wanting more mental acuity, mm-hmm. um, just kind of that foggy middle-aged mom thing where you're just like, I just like, I, I can't think of words. I can't, I yeah. forget where I put my keys. I'm describing myself really. <laughs> uh, Mag three and eight can be really, really helpful for that. Yeah. So those are the three that I usually start with, but I would say pretty much everybody, it's a pretty safe bet that you're deficient. And mm-hmm. I will also say that mag torate um, has at least what I've seen, the best research behind it in terms of helping lower blood pressure. That's what I have you on. And that's what, well, yeah. my my family has a history of diabetes and high blood pressure. It all comes um, together. It know, all comes together. And yeah, like yeah, we right, said, just right. just mag alone is not going to solve that. But right. it, we're mm-hmm. using it supplementally. Yeah. In, you know, and then we can test my blood pressure, and we can yeah. test my we can see my blood sugar and the blood tests and everything. Totally. So yeah, we're kinda, yeah, we're testing it all. But yeah. most of where we're going to get results is going to be the exercise that you're doing, and even more so what you're yeah. eating and what you're not eating. Right. Just can't reiterate that enough. But right. you know, we're gonna we're gonna throw as much at it as we can. We'll see what we can. See what and, we can. Because we know harm. this goes back to like we we have a, an objective issue we're trying to deal with and so we're trying yeah. to use a supplement see what we can do with it um, exactly exactly do we have a minute or two to talk about brands uh you have yeah yeah we got two minutes okay because i minutes. uh like we talked about it the those are the big three that's where i would start with even with those there's exceptions um yeah. but you know so be responsible do your own homework but most people could probably very safely at least start with those especially if you're active especially if you're struggling with not feeling great low energy not sleeping well these things, all three can work really synergistically right. to just generally bring your level of health up. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's very, very low risk. So uh, that that's why I recommend them. Okay, so, that, so let's go. Let's get into brands. You know, yeah, I'm, excited. Into brands. I'm excited. I'm okay, excited now. Okay. We're going to talk brands. You're not excited. I buy them for you. You don't even know what you're taking. <laughs> <laughs> I do have so much that's power. True. Yeah. That's true. Um, okay. But like we said at the start, quality control um, does matter, right? There's all these different confounding factors of why or why not your particular supplement might you be mean working quality for you. control of like, of the like supplement. what's in the supplement. Exactly. So Someone says, here's a vitamin D supplement. Right. There could be more than vitamin D in or it. Or there could be no vitamin D, or it could be vitamin D that sat Why, in a who's, cold who's, warehouse. Who's selling no vitamin D, vitamin D supplements? Well, I mean, th- I mean, probably a ton of people. My point is okay. you need to find the brands that you trust. Uh-huh. And I recommend almost completely sticking with them. Uh-huh. Um, I, like that's the thing is that like, you just don't know, you uh-huh. know what I mean? And, and. I'm not, I, I don't think it's that well regulated. We're more going off of like just who has the most reputable brand, which brands yeah. have been around long enough. Doctors, researchers are all having really good, you know, luck with it. Um, they usually are the ones who are really transparent in terms of ingredients, yeah. where they source them. 
um, uh, inspections, Why? who's doing those inspections yeah. of their warehouse. They're very, very transparent. You can see it. You can yeah. go to their website. They're very open. That's kind of what you're looking for. And I'm just going to go ahead and list off some that I think are reputable and good. Oh, hang on. I'm still stuck on this. Why would someone sell you a, a vitamin D supplement and have more than just vitamin D inside that supplement. Well, I mean, it could be, I mean, I'm just saying whatever it takes to save money. I mean, that's the bottom line. So it could be powdered sugar. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it they, just doesn't make, it, like I guess it, it just doesn't make sense to me that someone would say, Hey, we're marketing this and this is a vitamin D, um, you know, product. And then they put more than just vitamin D in that product. Well, I'm, so, I'm not saying they necessarily put more than that. I'm saying they yeah. could just do a really low quality vitamin D. I'm saying they could yeah. put something different than vitamin D. They could put whatever they want in a capsule. Yeah, nobody right. looks, nobody right. knows, nobody questions it. Everyone just so whatever's going to save okay. them money. I mean, yeah. that's all anybody cares about. And, and our point is just because something is a supplement and not a pharmaceutical does uh-huh. not necessarily mean that that company yeah, is right. being honest or that right. it's going to be effective. And yeah. again, there's a lot of reasons why you might not want to take something. Just one of them though is quality control because you might figure out from your blood work. My vitamin D is really low. I really do need it. Yeah. But you also need to be thinking about like, okay, who is um, a reputable company that I can trust that the supplement that right. I'm taking is high quality and actually is what it says it right. is. That, that's all right. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Everyone lies, you guys. Everyone lies. So yeah. um, I, I'll just tell you my recommends. You can take it or leave it, but I like Thorn. I like Pure Encapsulations. And I like designs for health. Those okay. three I've had great luck with. All of my clients have had great luck with. With all three of those. Those three brands, yeah. Brands, no, but with all with magnesium, Any uh, of, vitamin it, D. Everything they sell. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So far, yeah. so good. And I'm not saying you all need everything they sell. Uh-huh. I'm just saying they, in my opinion, are very trustworthy. Man, they, should, they should pay us brands. for this plug. Uh, this wow. is a phenomenal, yeah. yeah. Super, super good. Um, I will also mention I really like Dr. Amy Horneman's Fixer line. She calls herself the thyroid fixer. If you are interested in women's hormones or thyroid in particular, you should follow her podcast. She has a lot of good information. She sells supplements and it's all fixer. So thyroid fixer, liver fixer. That's kind of her thing. Uh I've been very happy with those also. They sound kind of gimmicky. Um, You definitely pay for them. But um, I've had really good luck uh, with a handful of her supplements with a lot of people. So again, anecdotal, um, I come recommended. Her uh, ratings are very high. Um, I really like her stuff too. Um, and lastly, I really like Ben Lynch. Uh, his uh, He's the guy who wrote the book Dirty Jeans, which is a phenomenal book. Um, and he has a supplement line called Seeking Health, especially if you're look if you're interested in methylation, maybe you have some gene mutations, uh, B vitamins, B complexes. His stuff is really, really good too. And I know there's other names out there. Those are the ones that come to mind and that I have personal experience with and I would definitely vouch for. So definitely make sure for the most part, you're careful who you buy from. I think it does matter. And sometimes that's what it comes down to. You'd have zeroed in that you need this B12 or you need this whatever. Right, right. But I do think quality matters and just the ability to trust that what you're getting and what you're you know buying is you know what you actually think it is. Mm-hmm. So there's that. That's a lot of information. I know. We just waterboarded yeah. you guys with a lot of talk about supplements. So uh, why... You spent most of the time talking about why you did want to talk about supplements. I know. Even though you start off the show, why I don't want to talk about supplements. Why I don't want to talk about supplements. Everybody just eat real food. Mm -hmm. Eat real food. But there is a place for them. There is a place for them. Especially those big three that we talked about. Uh, If you guys want to be in a conversation with us, reach out to us. You can email us at uh, wrenchmedia at gmail.com. Wrenchmedia at gmail.com. You can follow my wife on Instagram. I'm on Instagram, but you're going to not... You know, you might see me smoking a cigar on Instagram and not really get any health food tips over there. No, you're not going to get any. Um, <laughs> so, and then of course, so subscribe to our YouTube channel, download our Fight Laugh Feast app, where we're also um, on your phone. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Yeah, and I appreciate it. Until next week. Thanks, guys. Yeah. See you next week. <laughs>